we all understand the type of climate that we're dealing with. We're dealing with multiple offer situations. You know, I'd love to know sort of what's your why? What what, what makes you tick? Why are you so successful? Uh, in and your- have a dialogue with your lawyer. Have a dialogue with your agent. Both sort of passionate about sort of what we do. Again, vet your agent to make sure that they're experienced have- and they're local. I like that idea. No excuse to miss it on no Saturdays excuse. from 8 to 9. <laughs> That's right. WBZ. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. Let's shoot over to Erica Wallace uh, from Walls Consulting Group. Hey, Erica. Hello, guys. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for coming back with Tech Talk. What kind of app do you have for us today? This week we're looking at something that can replace that um, sign-in sheet. When you go to open houses and you, the realtor is asking you to write in their information, it's mm-hmm. called Open House Manager, and it does cost four ninety nine. but for real estate professionals, it's sort of a no-brainer That's because nothing. it really simplifies the whole process. It creates the um, basically the logbook right on your iPad or your iPhone, although I'd recommend using it with a bigger tablet. Mm-hmm. And it captures the information of the people coming through the property, and it's very easy to you know put your information in, but it also helps the agent keep you up to date if anything changes with the property. And it helps the sellers know who's come through the house. It generates an automatic activity report at the end of the open house, so it really keeps everybody in the loop. So this is to any of the real estate agents listening out there that sort of uh, walk away from those uh, open houses with chicken scratch and, and wrong information and all that sort of thing. Uh, having this app one, I mean, for a seller that has, you know, people, you know, going through their, their home, I mean, it's really important that they know who's who did go through their home. So it's, I think this is a great app to really keep all that stuff organized and, and keep everybody protected. All right, let's say you miss a mortgage payment and yeah. your, your, your credit score gets hit. You get hit yeah. pretty bad on a mortgage payment. Is that true? Actually, um, whether it's a mortgage payment or a credit card, it's really? all the same score factor. There's okay. no differential. So oh. a 30 day late is 10 points. I'm learning everything. I'm learning new things uh, every day. You really shouldn't ha- carry a balance over 30% of the available, correct? That's correct. You're better off if you had you know five to 10 credit cards out there and spread them all out throughout all 10 of them and kept that same balance down less than 30% of what the limits are than you are to rack up two or three cards over that 30%. Yeah, because w- people say, well, the, it's paid off every, every month, but that doesn't matter because if it's due on the 20th, uh, you rack it up and you're going to pay it off on the 19th, but Discover Card reports you on the 7th. It doesn't matter. They never know. It's reported once a month. They never know right. that it's been paid off. That's right. And by law, they have up to 90 days to report that new balance uh, to the credit reporting agencies. So that can make a big difference, especially for people in the home buyer market. You know, they're planning on doing everything right and making sure their credit's good, but it can be a big effect if we just paid it off at the end of the month when it was due and we use it again right away, that new balance could be reflective on there. Do you think that the limited inventory has contributed to this as well? Uh, absolutely, but I think you know the limited inventory that we've had, even below a million dollars, has pushed things up higher. So when you get to a point of multiple offers, if you're if a property is coming on the market and is priced appropriately, you can certainly expect uh, multiple offers, especially around a million dollars. That's a good point. So you talk about so you're experiencing multiple offers. Uh, let's just uh, break it down. If you're representing a seller and you're faced with multiple offer situations, how do you navigate that? How do you how do you really educate the seller on which offer to take? You'll explain all facets of what could happen, mm. and when it does happen, they're more prepared. And that first weekend, or when you choose to go to market, how you plan for them and manage their expectations is also important. Um, You may position things as far as this, we're pricing things just slightly below the market price, Hmm. and you could potentially expect multiple offers. And if you do get multiple offers, we'll sit down with you, break down each offer, and then together with you, select the most appropriate buyer so you can maximize the transaction. I mean, I think one of the things that we try to, you know, especially emphasized to our buyers is try to look at the house for the next 15 to 20 years. You're not looking to buy a house and sell it in the next five years. Right. Get into the long haul, finance as much as you can because what we hear is those rates won't be around forever. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of great packages out there where you can finance for the long haul 
And then if you want to pull that back over the next couple of years, you can do that and reduce your right. you know, equity or in- improve your equity. As far as the inventory that you're seeing, what, what's your impression of days on the market? I mean, is it, is it has it shrunk significantly? It has. I mean, there's certainly, I think, sell- sellers are following and hearing what they're hearing about pricing things more aggressively. So inventory, days on the market has definitely shrunk. Our inventory over the past couple of weeks, we've seen an uptick. Mm. So that should hopefully sustain, sustain us for the next couple of months. Let's talk about the importance of listing brokers. I know that, uh, you know, Mitchell Bernstein from William Ravis was talking about, obviously, you know, educate your, your sellers. Have the sellers listen to you. We know the market, et cetera. Tell me a little bit about what your impression of the value of a listing agent is. Because you sold your place, you used the listing agent, you didn't attempt right. to sell it on your own, and I did that. No. I. Exactly. No, my wife's got her, her, her broker's license. She's an attorney. So right. she, we could have, right. but that's not my what I do. Um, you know, they came in, they come in, they tell you what the property, um, you know, is worth around you. Mm-hmm. They show you comps of, of property like yours. Uh, you come up with a strategy on how you want to price your home. But she brought in a stager. She brought in a professional photographer. She actually brought in Dave Olborn to come in and do the photography in the house. She did all of this sort of thing. And, you know, we just, there was a crazy statistic that for sale by owner, if you want to go at this alone, you're probably going to do one of two things. Underprice your home or overprice your home and it's going to sit there and do nothing. And typically you're going to pay a seller's agent 5%. Mm. But statistics show you're going to make upwards over 10% by having a a listing agent on your side. So they're going to sort of sort out um, what the best offer is. And again, it's not always the highest priced offer. 